At the beginning of the story, we can see a man getting into an accident with a vending machine. As he opens his eyes, he realizes that he is still alive. However, he feels something strange with his body and discovers that he is unable to move. Suddenly, he hears a voice that he recognizes. He also states that he is a big fan of vending machines. However, once he realizes that he has been reincarnated as a vending machine, he starts freaking out. He is unsure if becoming a vending machine is a curse or a blessing from God as he became the thing he loves the most. In other words, he is now a vending machine with a human soul inside. He has to figure out how to live as a vending machine and come to terms with his new reality. At first, he couldn't help but get mesmerized by the looks of the vending machine. He then begins to experiment with everything the vending machine can do. He learns about the inner workings of the machine, including how to change the items for sale and how to use the point system. That keeps him alive. Points are converted from money, and he can also use those points to change goods. He discovers that his body does not run on electricity, but rather on those points. This means that if he runs out of points, he will die. He realizes that he must sell products in order to survive, but he is uncertain if anyone will come and buy from him. After some time, a group of frog monsters emerges from the water and begins to attack the vending machine. As the monsters attack, he learns about the durability of his new form. In the midst of the attack, he must quickly figure out how to defend himself and protect his new body from harm. After enduring numerous attacks from the monsters, he learns about blessings, which are special powers granted by God in this world. He is thrilled to discover that he can use his blessing to create a barrier for protection. Without hesitation, he deploys the barrier and successfully fends off the monsters. Once the danger has passed, he sets about repairing the damage to his vending machine body. He desperately hopes that someone will come and buy something from him. After several days of waiting, a girl named Lamis finally appears. Upon seeing the vending machine, she becomes curious and begins to inspect it. So he uses his voice command to communicate with Lamis, who is shocked to hear a box speaking to her. As they talk, Lamis gives him a name and starts calling him Huck Khan. After some back and forth, Lamis manages to insert the coin into the machine and successfully purchases some food. Thus Huckkin makes his first sale. Huckkin's happiness grows as he observes Lamis is enjoying the food. He feels a sense of satisfaction knowing that his customer is enjoying the products he has to offer. As Lamis grows tired from her long journey, she eventually falls asleep beside Huckkin. So as a token of gratitude, Huckkin decides to deploy his barrier to keep her safe. With the barrier in place, Huckkin can rest easy knowing that Lamis is safe and secure while she sleeps. The next morning, Lamis wakes up feeling refreshed and well-rested. As she begins to interact with Huckkin, she soon realizes that his vocabulary is limited to certain phrases such as, hello there, thank you so much, etc. After realizing that, Huckkin is able to understand her, Lamis takes the opportunity to introduce herself to him. She tells him her name and shares a little bit about herself. As their conversation progresses, Lamis learns that Huckkin has been feeling lonely. He has been stationed in this remote location for some time. After hearing about Huckkin's loneliness, Lamis makes the decision to bring him along with her. As Lamis begins to lift Huckkin, he is amazed to see that she is able to lift him with ease, despite his weight of 500 kilograms. After traveling together for some time, Huckkin and Lamis finally arrive at Lamis' village. As they approach the entrance, the guards on duty are surprised to see Lamis returning safe and sound. Lamis greets the guards warmly and proceeds to explain everything about Huckkin. As they talk, Huckkin learns that he is in a dungeon. The guards, intrigued by Huckkin and his vending machine capabilities, decide to buy some drinks from him. As they sample different beverages, they are so impressed by the quality and variety that they end up buying every item that Huckkin has to offer. As soon as Lamis returns to the inn, both the innkeeper and Manami are overjoyed to see that she is safe and well. Manami rushes over to Lamis and hugs her tightly, relieved that her friend has returned safely. Lamis decides to place Huckkin near the entrance of the inn. Manami also implies that Huckkin might be able to attract more customers. Huckkin states that they are currently inside a dungeon, even though it appears to have a sky. After some time, Huckkin becomes quite popular among the villagers. Lamis then tells Huckkin that, hopefully someday, he will be able to communicate with her in a better way. 
In order to achieve this goal, she explains that she needs to save up some money and then visit her friend Hulami who is a magic item engineer. Wamis believes that, with Hulami's expertise, they might be able to enhance Hukkin's abilities and improve his communication skills. The next day, Hukkin has an unexpected encounter with a bear who is staring intently at him. After that, Hukkin learns that the bear is actually the director of the Hunters Association. The director approaches Lamis and Hukkin. He invites them to join the association on their next expedition with Hakan providing food for the group. Lamis and Hukkin agree to the proposal. Then they set off with the Hunters Association to the base of the Frog Fiends. Their mission is to subjugate those monsters in order to keep the village safe. While taking a break during their journey, Lamis meets Kirioil, the leader of a renowned adventurer group called the Menagerie of Fools. Yep, that's the name of their group. After learning more about Hukkin and his vending machine capabilities, Kirioil decides to call upon Filmina. Well, she knows a lot about magic tools and items, and Kirioil wants to know if she knows anything about Hukkin's unique abilities. Despite her extensive knowledge, Filmina is unable to figure out the secrets behind Hukkin's vending machine powers. She also mentions that it is possible that Hukkin isn't a magic item or something like that. Meanwhile, Lamis has the opportunity to meet Shui, another member of the Menagerie of Fools. Hukkin and Lamis, determined to protect their village, decide to join the battle against the Frog Fiends. Hukkin vows to protect Lamis as she is his first customer and his first friend. The next day, the subjugation of the Frog Fiends begins in earnest. As the battle rages on, Hukkin stays true to his promise and saves Lamis using his barrier. As the battle against the Frog Fiends continues, Kirioil learns that Hukkin is capable of deploying a protective barrier. Upon discovering this new information, Kirioil becomes even more interested in learning about Hukkin's unique abilities. Director Bear thanks Kirioil and his group for their cooperation. After a while, Director Bear, along with the Menagerie of Fools and other adventurers, set off to subjugate the King of the Frog Fiends. While they are away on their mission, Hukkin and Lamis remain behind to provide support to those who have been injured in the battle. Hukkin provides sports drinks to injured individuals to ease their pain. Then one of the adventurers attempts to take advantage of the situation by trying to steal from Hukkin. However, Lamis is quick to notice the thief's actions and catches him in the act. Without hesitation, Lamis confronts the thief and delivers a swift and decisive beating. As Lamis and Hukkin continue their journey, they accidentally stumble upon the King of the Frog Fiends. Lamis, realizing the danger they are in, desperately tries to find a way out of the situation. However, her efforts seem to be in vain. In this dire situation, Hukkin comes up with a solution. He provides cola and mint to Lamis and her companions. But at first, she is unsure of what to do with these items. After some back and forth, Lamis finally understands Hukkin's plan and quickly springs into action. She and her companions target the King Frog Fiend's eyes with the mixture of cola and mint. The sudden attack catches the monster off guard. Menagerie of fools and other adventurers come back, and they manage to defeat the King Frog Fiend. 